Nowadays, we typically use software for our tax return, like TaxFix, SmartStewer, StewerBot, WunderTax, etc. Or we just hand the whole thing over to the tax accountant. But because we outsource it or use software, many people don't even know how income tax is actually calculated and how your tax actually comes about in the end. Since we keep getting quite a few questions about this, I thought I'd just go ahead and record a basic video here where we go through it step by step together. Since we will be working in a highly professional manner in this video, I will go and grab some literature. And we're heading together on section two of the Income Tax Act. And there it says, scope of taxation definitions. Income from agriculture and forestry is taxed. Income from business operations is also subject to taxation. And I think I'll just make it a little easier in this video. And let me tell you, it's really important at this point, if you're self-employed, you have first and foremost revenues. That means all the money that somehow comes to you within the scope of your self-employment. By the way, it doesn't necessarily have to be money. It can also be what they call money's worth. Money's worth is, for example, when you get items, a service for your work. That's common among influencers. For example, they're paid more in products than in money. But you also have to pay taxes on these earnings. That means you first have to start with your revenue. At this point, your net revenue is crucial. Sales tax is separate from income tax, but calculated based on net revenue when necessary. Then you can deduct your operating expenses from that. The business expenses are all the costs that you can deduct in your ongoing self-employment. That means all the costs you need to generate your sales. I've already recorded a more in-depth video on the topic of business expenses and what you can deduct there. I'll share the link up there on the right ones. In general, about income tax, I've made many in-depth videos you can check out. I will link them all to you below in the video description. That means if a certain topic interests you more, be sure to check it out. Important here, we have the business income, which is the revenue, then the operating expenses, and the result is your income. Sadly, German legislature, or tax law, distinguishes two self-employment types. And that's income from freelance work, which means income from self-employment or business operations in the Income Tax Act. If you're not a freelancer, then you're a business owner. We've got two types of taxes from the income tax law, income from self-employment and income from business operations. In Germany, the German income tax law recognizes not only two types of taxes from self-employment, but also a total of seven different income categories in total. In your tax return, for example, you must declare non ac work income. Not self-employed work means you're not self-employed, so you're employed somewhere and have to declare employee income in your tax return. Furthermore, there are income from agriculture and forestry. If you have a farm, you must report your profit or loss in your tax return. Also, there's the area of renting and leasing. For instance, if you buy an apartment and rent it out, you'll have income initially and you can deduct expenses against it. You can also report the profit or loss in your tax return. Next, there's income from capital assets as another type of tax. For instance, you buy stocks and sell them later at a profit, typically subject to taxation. By the way, typically a tax is already withheld from the portfolio or from the bank. That's what they call the capital gains tax. You don't have to report this income in your tax return. But sometimes it actually makes sense, specifically when your own tax rate, your individual tax rate, is lower than the withholding tax, so lower than 25%. Then it makes sense to include capital income in your income tax return because you actually pay less taxes or possibly even get a tax refund. Next, there are also the so-called miscellaneous income as another type of tax. That's not a catch-all category, but it's precisely defined what falls under it. For instance, private sales transactions could involve Bitcoin sales, exemplifying the nature of such transactions in this context. If you bought Bitcoin and then sell it with a profit, it can potentially be subject to taxation as miscellaneous income. And with these five types of income, plus the freelance activity and business activity, we have our seven types of income together. You add up these types of income, and then you have a total of the earnings. And that's already the first important point you should know. If, for instance, you profit from one source and have losses from another, can you offset them? That doesn't always work. That means you can't offset every type of income with every other type of income. 
As an illustration, you cannot offset losses from Bitcoin trading using your employment activity. What you can do, e.g., when you profit from your job, typically the case, or you won't bother working. You can offset self-employment losses. If you have a salary job and earn 100,000 euros gross annual salary, you can start a business in parallel and offset a 20,000 euros loss in the first year. This means you don't have to pay taxes on the full 100,000 euros, but only on the difference of 80,000 euros. That implies you just need to pay taxes on the amount you actually calculated as income each year. When we calculate the sum of these earnings, we obtain the total amount of earnings at present. Furthermore, by deducting the age relief amount and the relief amount for single parents from this total income, we arrive at the overall income amount. If you don't have both of these or neither of these applies to you, then the sum of your earnings is identical to the total amount of earnings. From the total income, we deduct losses, specifically losses from other years, like the previous or following year, and so on. That means you can offset losses not only in the same year, but also from other years. I've made a more detailed video on loss offsetting. You can find it with all the other videos in the video description. That means we subtract losses from previous years from the total income, but we can also deduct exceptional burdens, for example. Examples. Healthcare costs, special expenses, e.g. insurances like health insurance, pension insurance. We also have a more detailed video on each. And when we deduct, we have income. When you calculate your income, you can deduct the child allowance or the child care allowance from it, and possibly a hardship compensation. And once you have completed that, we ultimately have your taxable income, which serves as the foundation for calculating income tax. With this taxable income, you can now refer to such tax tables. There are separate tax tables for individuals who are single or married, and then you can determine the amount of tax you need to pay. Meanwhile, the whole thing is more interactive, and there's a tool on the Treasury website. You can find a link below in the video description. Just enter your taxable income, and the tool will tell you how much income tax you have to pay. And let's simply examine that collectively, so I will proceed on my screen with you one time. And this is how the page looks. I have to enter my taxable income, my ZV, at this specific location. And I am going to write down 100,000 euros in this field. Then I have to indicate whether I am married or single. That's because married couples can file a joint tax return. That means everything is simply added up once. The rate is different there. I have to specify the calculation year. That means I can go back until 58. That means here you can also calculate once again how much taxes your parents would have had to pay or hopefully have paid in your year of birth. Stick with 2022, click calculate. He calculates, shows taxable income, 100,000 euros at the top. Single, calculation year 2022. And here he tells me that I have to pay a tax of 32,732 euros on this 100,000 euros, which is 100,000 euros of taxable income. But that's not all, because I also have to pay solidarity surcharge, and it's 1,800 euros and 26 cents. In 2022, my tax burden amounts to 34,532.26 euros overall. That's precisely what I must pay. Crucial now, there are also disparities between your mean tax rate and marginal tax rate. There's also a more in-depth video about it down in the video description. But that's also shown to me here. That means I have an average tax rate of 34.53% and a marginal burden, which is my personal marginal tax rate, top tax rate, are 42%. That's what the tool tells me, and you can calculate it for yourself after calculating your taxable income. So basically, this means that I have to pay about 35,000 euros in taxes for the year 2022. But that does not mean that this is actually what I have to transfer to the tax office now. Because I may have already paid taxes in advance, even for the current year. Honestly, not possibly, but that's usually the case. For instance, like the capital gains tax. The above-mentioned deductions on capital gains are a prepayment on income tax. And a second type of tax, sometimes seen as a separate tax, is also an advance payment on your income tax. And that's the income tax that gets deducted from every paycheck. So, if I assume now that I have income tax deductions on my salary statement every month, amounting to 2,000 euros, then I have already prepaid income tax 12 times 2,000 euros per month. 
12 times 2,000 is equal to 24,000 euros. Out of 35,000, only 11,000 euros remains. Then, some self-employed will know this, there are also quarterly payments for income tax. Self-employed individuals lack wage tax deductions, so they must make quarterly income tax prepayments. And if I have now paid 4,000 euros each for income tax in advance four times in one year, then I have already paid a total of 24,000 euros in income tax per year, plus four times 4,000 euros. So 16,000 euros in advance payments for income tax made during the year, a total of 40,000 euros in tax payments that the tax office already has for me. Tax assessment arrives. Calculation shows income of 100,000 euros, tax burden around 35,000 euros. Next step, calculate prepayment already 40,000 euros, tax refund 5,000 euros. And with that, we are actually at the end of the calculation. Usually, each tax assessment is also the advance notice for the next years, indicating what you must prepay quarterly. I know, this whole video was pretty dry. Thank God it's not as dry as this ham. If you still have a question or something is not quite clear, just ask your question down in the comments section and I'll do my best to help you out. Or just check out one of our upcoming videos, like this one here.